Uh, this morning, the first one of the first talks was from Matt, and it was called Don't Break the Internet. So I decided to have a, a class called How to Break the Internet. But actually, if we were going to name the class appropriately, it would be How to Fix the Internet. Uh, how many of you guys and gals support clients, have clients that you need to support? <clears throat> OK. How many of you have clients that you don't support? Oh. The, <laughs> yeah, can't stand them, whatever. Yeah, so um, we're going to talk today about some practical things of how to support clients in a way that will bring success, not just for you as an agency owner or a freelancer, but for your clients, because isn't that, at the end of the day, what we want is to have successful clients. If we don't have successful clients, then we're not successful personally or as an agency. So just a little bit about me. Yes, this is all, these are my kids. Uh, except for my mom and the groom in this picture. All of these are my kids and then me and my wife. We, I did not begin my career as a, as a young man in IT. However, I've always loved IT. I built my first website in the year 2000. It was for our church. And I used front page. With, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't applaud because it was awful. Uh, then I also used Dreamweaver. Equally awful. Um, I and okay, this is going to get booze. But do you remember that Word used to have this function called Save for the Web? Oh. Yes, you could make a website in Microsoft Word, and it was equally awful than anything you can ever imagine. But I did build a website in Microsoft Word, so that goes way back. I've always had a love for anything that's cutting edge, IT. Uh, I work for Nathan Ingram at Brilliant WebWorks, and I'm always saying, hey, why don't we try this? And he's, he's, he doesn't like to change for really good reasons. If you went through his processes uh, talk, there are great reasons that you don't change. But I am that guy. Uh, I run beta of macOS, even though my software says this does not work with macOS beta. Uh, I run iOS betas on my phone and those kind of things. That's me. I love technology, uh, and I love helping people with technology. Actually, let me just change that. I love helping people. My, um, my career, if you will, I was a pastor at a church in Moore, Oklahoma for 35, or 25 years. Uh, and then my family and I, we moved to Ukraine. That's where this picture was taken, just outside of Kiev, to work as missionaries. We were there for 10 years, came back just before the war began. And we serve uh, people, families who are affected by disability. You probably see something different about our kids. We have five kids that have Down syndrome. One of them is biological, and then we adopted four in Ukraine that have Down syndrome. So that is our hearts. That is my heart as a person uh, inside the religious community or outside. I, I love WordPress. Well, I, I like WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> you watch it. Uh, Kate's not here, is she? No, she's not. So I like WordPress. I like building websites, but my passion is to serve people. Whatever context that's in, that's my passion. I am a, a horror, uh, I shouldn't say horrible, that's self-condemning. I am a staunch introvert. I do not like being around people or in front of people unless I'm helping them. If I'm helping somebody or serving somebody, suddenly I am an extrovert. So uh, that's my personality. Uh, that's what I've done. And interestingly, being a pastor, being a missionary that serves the, uh, the, like an oppressed population, uh, really ties in well with client support because I want the best for you. So if I'm helping you, I want the best for you because that's when I, now there is the dark side to this, that it, it can be validation for me, which is, is, is not appropriate, but also if I'm helping you win, then I'm winning too. Um, so it is a mutual, it's a mutual agreement in client support. So that's kind of my background. I am the client six. We don't have a title, but I made one up. Client success manager for Brilliant WebWorks, and I also do project development there. So I've been with Nathan for uh, almost four years. Can you believe it? <clears throat> so um, anyway, I like web development, like WordPress, but my passion is to serve people. So I've heard this so many times. Let's read this together. One, two, three. Business would be, oh, no, 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 no. Let's read this together. One, two, three. Business would be so much easier if it weren't for clients. 
Yeah, can I get an amen? amen. Okay. Amen. However, wrong. Oh, did you see him? He went. <laughs> the, yeah, I know. Uh, I was once taught just because you can do something in PowerPoint doesn't mean you should. That was one of those things, but cute. This is actually the truth, right? Business would not exist if it weren't for our clients. So if we have trouble with our clients, <clears throat> I would suggest we need to maybe look in the mirror because we've trained. Now there are, uh, listen, there are clients that you need to fire. I get that. We have some clients that have almost been fired. But in, at the end of the day, if your clients are misbehaving, and I hate to use that word because that's so negative, but if your clients are misbehaving, you've taught them to misbehave. Or you've taught them, you've taught them, you've taught them to, oh gosh, double negatives. You've taught them to not, not misbehave. You haven't taught them to behave. So that's what we're going to talk about today. <clears throat> Who are the kind of people that we serve? We serve uh, a demographic that maybe no, under, no, no other support industry has to serve in that we have people that are cutting edge like me that like to try all the new things and break the internet. And then we have, peop, we have clients that are in their 80s that are, that are just blogging. Um, they don't know, he, this one particular man I'm thinking of, he doesn't know a lot, but man, he loves to write and he writes great stuff. People like to read his stuff. Um, but he doesn't know WordPress and he doesn't really want to know WordPress. We have a blind lady that, uh, I don't know how old she is, but she's a blogger. She likes to write. Um, it's not even just to the blind community, but she has really good input when she writes a blog post. Uh, she can't see. Can you imagine switching WordPress to the block editor for a non-sighted person that's always used classic editor? Is the block editor accessible? Supposedly. Have you ever, yeah, ish. Have you ever tried to even use the classic editor without your site? Exactly. <clears throat> so we have a wide gamut of people that we serve, and so do you. We all have um, people who are who are used to. Uh, people want to be per, they want to be personal. Have you ever called a support line and you have to talk to a computer? You're answering questions like you're talking to a real person. How many of you like that? No. Why don't you like that? Because you know what you need. If it was a person that answered the phone, you could have already been through the conversation, right? Our clients are the same way. We do use AI in some circumstances, but never to communicate with a client. Clients want to be known by their name, and they want to be a real person. They don't want to be just a number. They don't, they don't want to be spoken to by a computer. They want human interaction. Don't you want, well, to a limit, I want human interaction. <clears throat> but most of us, all of us are built to have some sort of community interaction, some sort of personal interaction. Those are the people we serve. They're just like us. Uh, we have people that want instant gratification. We uh, launched a huge, <clears throat> excuse me, we want, launched a huge site last week, and we were in a, Nathan and I were in a forum of people where we just said, hey, this site is open. What do you think of the site? Um, one of the guys who, who typically is a complainer, um, and you all know who those people are. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm ha uh, the site's fine, but I'm having trouble with search. I can't find what I'm looking for. <clears throat> well, that was the main crux of this new project. We were rebuilding a training site that has over a thousand training videos and one of the biggest problems was you couldn't find anything in the search. Well, we went to great lengths to make search awesome, and it is awesome. And so Nathan said, well, uh, what do you mean? Uh, we'll call him Frank. What do you mean, Frank? Well, I searched, and it took a couple of seconds to find what I wanted. <laughs> How dare us? Yeah, but those are our clients. They're used to having high-speed internet. They're used to getting things when they want it. And uh, when, when their product doesn't work the way they think it should, meaning they blink a couple of times instead of once when, for a page to come up, uh, the sky is falling. Uh, Karina used the word hair on fire. That's what we have some clients that come with us. If the page speed you know, gets below 99.9, .9, she comes at us with her hair on fire because they want instant gratification. How about multi-devices? Do you enjoy supporting your web clients on multi-devices? <clears throat> 
We had a client not too long ago that said, uh, on my iPhone 4, okay, stop, <laughs> right? But there are thousands of Android phones. How do you support a th thousands of, of Android phones? There are, people still use iPhone 4, I guess, this guy does, but then up to iPhone 15 Pro Max. Then we have, talk about computer monitors. I mean, how many sizes of computer monitors are, you get my point. Your client reaches out to you and says, hey, on my, uh, on my CRT running IE6, uh, yeah, okay, you get it. Um, we, ha we have clients that are really, really independent until, they're, until they break the site. And then they write to us and they say, hey, somehow, <laughs> somehow um, all of these posts are gone or this, this whole product group is gone. Um, suddenly they're very dependent on us. And by the way, you go into stream. If you don't use the plugin stream, I highly recommend it because it tells you everything anybody does on the website. You go in and say, oh yeah, yeah, you deleted all of these uh, this morning at 8.29, and this is your IP address and your username. Uh, so Stream is the name of that plugin. Really, really useful. Um, our clients have expectations that are often elevated far beyond what they need to be. A simple site, and they want it to be like CNN. I get it. Their business and their baby, their organization is the most important thing to them. Um, and that's the way they come to us as, as the agency. We have a guy who is a self-confessed Luddite. If you don't know what that is, it's somebody that's not necessarily against technology, but they, don't, they refuse to embrace it. They choose not to embrace it. Uh, we have a couple of those Luddite type people. And then we have people that have run uh, websites for their large organizations. So we have this whole gamut of people, and so do you. We um, serve around 100 clients, and we have people all over that spectrum that we support. So it can be a real challenge, right? When you're supporting people who don't care about technology and don't want to know it, uh, but they have a website that's important to their business or organization. And then we have people that get in there as an admin user <clears throat> and do stuff that we wish they wouldn't do because they, they have the knowledge, but they don't always understand the, the um, waterfall effect when they do something. Um, Impatient. Do you guys have any impatient clients? Just the one. Oh, two of you. Okay, well, then we'll skip this. Um, but impatient clients. Uh, and, and part of that is training. And we'll talk about that in a second. We train our clients to be impatient. Sometimes there's a couple of customers um, that will put in a ticket. And if they don't hear from me within two hours or three hours, they're writing back, is everything okay? Or somebody will have emailed Nathan something and uh, it's one, okay, it's not somebody, it's one particular client. And, <laughs> and she will write to me, I uh, haven't heard, I sent Nathan an email this morning and I haven't heard from him, is his family okay, did something bad happen? I'm like, settle down, he's been in meetings all day, he'll get to you when you can. And by the way, you're not supposed to email Nathan, you're supposed to email a ticket, you're supposed to create a ticket. Uh, so we have impatient clients. Why is it important for us to serve our clients? We build, uh, some of our clients we didn't build the website for, but most of our clients, we built a great website. We build great websites. Um, but if we hand a website over to a client and that's the end of our relationship, you are, well, you're leaving money on the table. But beyond that, that's not serving a client. And at the, at, I really think that our, our goal ought to be to serve the business, serve the organization, serve the individual, a full service that actually makes them successful. Not just deliver them a great website and then never, and then be gone. Now part of our process is, I don't think this is, I think it's okay to say this. If it's not, um, we'll strike it from the recording. Uh, but part of our process is, we don't build someone a website or take on a client unless they take on our maintenance agreement. And there's lots of reasons for that, which you probably already understand that we're not gonna go into. But um, when you provide great service, to clients, your brand reputation is gonna be good. We do not, uh, we don't solicit clients. How long has it been, Nathan, since you had to look for a client? How many years? Can't even remember. Our clients are all word of mouth, why? But just because we build good websites? Not all, we do build good websites, but that's not why, that's not the only reason why. We're also great at serving our clients, and that's not anything about us uh, per, per, per se, 
we just understand the bigger picture. We don't just build a website for someone. We serve our client as long as they need us to serve them. And that increases your brand reputation and people, people do care about that. Why do you hate to schedule anything with your cable provider to come out to your house? Why do you hate that so bad? <clears throat> yeah, they give you a six hour window of we're gonna be here from now, for either you know between eight and 4 p.m. That's more than six hours, I do do math, that's eight. Um, and then you get a call the next day, they never showed up. Hey, we got to your house at 7.15 and there was nobody there. We're gonna have to reschedule, right? Is that great service? No, it's not. Do people hate calling Cox Cable in Oklahoma City? They do, for that very reason. People like to interact with us because we serve them well. We do what we say we're gonna do. It increases your brand reputation, word of mouth referrals. And then your business is also gonna grow. We have a site that we did, um, when did we do the Ben's, Ben's first site? Uh, two years ago? A, a really large nonprofit <clears throat> uh, in the legal world. We built that website for them. They loved the site, they loved our service, and we've done two more big projects for them in the last two years, and we're about to start another project with them. Why is that? Is it because of a great website? Partly, yeah, but they like us. And it's not, and I don't mean, you know, they like us as in the junior high hormone way. They like us because we, and I didn't mean it like that either. <laughs> um, they like us because we serve them well. We make them successful. We make their site successful. And our business grows because of that. We um, are at a point where we are ready to maybe turn down some projects because we, too many people are wanting to build a site right now. That's a great problem to have. See the, um, so your business can grow. And then long-term relationships. Hey, I know we're not, trying to, we're not trying to make friends by serving clients, but why not? You know, what if you do build long-term relationships with people that are outside of the, the, sim the simple partnership of being their web provider? What if you do make a, is that so bad? if we serve somebody in a way that makes them our friend. And I'm not saying, you know, this is not a psychology 101 class, but we need relationships. And what if the relationship that means the most to somebody is with a support guy on the end of support at brilliantly.net because he cares about them as a person, not just as a problem, you know? Is that such a bad thing? I would say it's not. And I would say if you strive to, to build relationships with your, with your clients, uh, it goes a long way for your business as well. But I would say if you're only doing it to grow your business, that's not real and it, and it may backfire. I don't know. But care about people. That's the, that's the point. Um, I'm going to fly through these because, man, time goes fast when you're standing up here. Uh, demonstrate your expertise. Yeah, we, we get to in the support forum, we get to, uh, the support ticket system, we get to show that we know what we're doing. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing to know what you're doing and to, that your client knows that. And we, I would say um, we probably stand out from many competitors of like size agencies because we are really good at, at supporting our customers. And not just in the ticket system, but we're good, just good at supporting our customers because um, they're, they're people. They're not just customers, they're people. Um, I don't know how many, I tried to figure out how many web agencies there are in, in the United States. Um, I had an argument with ChatGPT about this. It kept saying, why don't you check these documents? And I said, you have access to these documents. Will you tell me a number? Well, uh, as of 2021, I did, I, we went back and forth. I didn't get a number, but it's thousands and thousands and thousands in the United States. So what's, what sets you apart? Why would someone want to come to your company? It can't only be that you build good websites because lots of people build really good websites. For that matter, you can get Cadence WP and Cadence uh, Pro, and they have thousands of really good starter templates that somebody that can sit down, somebody can sit down and build a pretty good website. Now, I, I know most people can't really do that, but somebody that knows how to do WordPress can. You have to have something else that sets you apart. And I would say that uh, supporting your customers is that thing that can set you apart. Uh, and then maximizing revenue. <clears throat> at, you know, that is our goal. I know I skipped past, it's okay. Maximizing revenue is a goal. And we look for ways in our support 
in our support stream to maximize revenue, to build revenue. Not too long ago, just like you guys, we were making the switch to GA4. Um, we, our customers that care about analytics kind of knew how to use universal analytics, uh, kind of. But when we switched to GA4, all bets were off. So what did we do? We started getting questions about, well, how do I read this? What do I do? We built a simple, I wish I had a, I would show it to you, but I don't have a, a screenshot. We built a simple dashboard in Looker Studio. Um, and we call it our, essentials, our essential insights report. Every client gets it. It's free. On page two of that form, on page two of that dashboard, there's a, a nice call out that says, hey, it, this is our in, essential report. Would you like to go deeper? We list some ways that, that could help them uh, track the usage of the website, whether it's um, conversions or whether it's going deeper on you know, form fills or whatever, document downloads. There's a button that takes them to the Brilliantly site. They can fill out a form. Uh, now, to full disclosure, I don't think anyone's filled that form out ever, but there's that opportunity. We saw a need in our support system. We filled that need and then we, we have built a product that no one has bought yet. That doesn't mean they're not going to, but we've got a, <laughs> right Nathan? They might, maybe, maybe one or two, um, but you look for ways to, to, to leverage your support to build the revenue of your business. So boundaries. Oh, we missed the guy. He was looking all happy. I'm gonna go back, yeah. So uh, it's imp this is, th these are some things that I have learned in the last couple of years about successful support. It's not misspelled. I know how to spell successful. This is support that is full of success, okay? So number one, and Nathan said this, I didn't you, yeah, you said this in your talk this morning. I am not a superhero. Now, some of my, some of our clients in the support system, they think, they think that we're supermen because we do things that they can't do. But I am not a superman. I am not a superhero. And here's the, here's the fact. I want them to be the superhero. I want to support them in a way that makes them Superman. Because I want them to be successful. Because if they succeed, our agency succeeds. We have customer longevity. We have two customers that have been customers of Brilliant Webworks for over 20 years. We have a large e-commerce, international e-commerce site that has been rebuilt by Brilliant Webworks five times in the last 20 years. We are about to start another rebuild for this customer. This is a big client. Why are they still with us? We've helped her succeed. And she's, she is a great, nice person, but nice people aren't gonna stick around unless they feel successful. And we've helped her succeed. And that helps us succeed. So when our clients succeed, we succeed. Um, don't train your clients. And you're all going, Okay, Come, think about this. You get an email from your client about, oh, 8.15 p.m. You're sitting on the couch with your, your spouse watching TV. Ping, you see it on your watch and you go, oh, yeah. You know, I could do that really fast. Pull out your laptop or even do it on your phone because it's that simple. Email the client back, hey, that's taken care of. What have you just taught your client? I am available anytime you have a problem and I'm gonna respond immediately. Don't do that. Please, if you don't take anything else out of this room, don't train your clients to be that client. Because here's the thing, it's not that client. It's not their fault. You think your client expected you at 8.15 p.m. to turn that around in five minutes? No, they were probably sitting in that so you had it first thing in the morning but you've trained your client, hey, anytime you have a problem, you email me, I'm gonna take care of you. I can tell you what, with around 100 websites that we manage, that's impossible. So tra don't train your clients, but train your clients. <clears throat> we have um, some clients that have a problem understanding that we don't take support requests by email, uh, that we have a special email address for them to use, that's, that creates a support ticket in our system. 
and it does not have either of our names attached to it. And yet, we have a couple of clients that continue to do that. How do I respond? Do I go ahead and do the ticket, do the request? I do not. I reply and say, hey, I got your request. Uh, this is something we can take care of pretty fast. If, if you what? If you do what we've already asked you to do, which is go to email that to support at brilliantly.net. We're happy to do that. But we, ha we, are tr we have trained and are training our clients. It, did my phone really just say I have five minutes left? It did. So yeah, don't train your clients, but do train your clients. Um, protect what's actually important. I have a wife, well, it's not up there anymore. I have a wife and a bunch of kids that need me. You have people in your life that need you that are far more important than your business. I get it. You have to have your business or you can't survive. But please, build some boundaries into your life. We're going to go so fast. Um, listen to your clients. Read your clients' um, emails. Understand what your client needs. If you don't understand what your client needs, ask. Ask. So often, I've uh, learned this lesson the hard way. I'll read part of the message and think, oh, yeah, I know what's wrong with that. And I'll fix it, and I'll send back the superhero message. Hey, we have looked into this problem. We have fixed the problem, and I haven't even understood what the problem was. So take some time with your clients to understand what it is that they need. Uh, and don't just, jump, don't just jump to a fast solution. Think about the problem. Think about what your client actually is asking for, because they don't know how to ask, right? Even if they know what they want, they don't know the right words to use. So don't assume you understand unless you're certain that you do. I understand that my time is up. Stop. Okay, clarity, clarity. Uh, this, is, this is hard for me personally. They already know that I'm, that I'm smart. I'm smarter than they are in this sphere. Doesn't mean I'm smarter than they are overall, but they already know that we're smart or they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be our clients. Um, be clear with your clients. Uh, I got this example. Here's a, here's a clear, concise uh, response to a ticket. There was a conflict between two parts of the website software that was causing the issue. We fixed the issue and everything is working as expected now. I stated what the problem was in words that they're gonna understand, or at least there's a good chance they'll understand. What, how about this? I, this is ChatGPT. I gave ChatGPT the clear answer and said, hey, make this really hard to understand. Here's what I came up with. <clears throat> Upon examination of the plugin software architecture, we identified a recurrent discrepancy in the cross-script communication where the server-side PHP functions were inadvertently invoking an asynchronous event handler, leading to a cascading failure in the website's front end and functionality, blah, 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 blah. Exactly, huh? Well, we can be tempted to show off because if we, if we fix a really complicated problem that, real, that truly is complicated, and it truly proves how smart you are. Our clients don't really care. What they care about is that button wasn't centered. It was off to the left. That's all they care about is that their button is back in the center, right? So be clear with your clients so they understand. Make a screencast. Show them what you did if it's possible to show them. Because your clients often want to be able to do these things themselves. Did you know that? They don't really want to ask you. Well, some clients do, but they don't, they don't want to be so dependent on you. If it's something that's simple, make a screencast. I'll do that and I'll say, hey, this is what I did. If you want to do this yourself, here's how to do it. And then I will follow it up and say, but that's, we are here to help you. So if this is not something you want to do, you reach out and we'll do it for you anytime. But maybe they do want to know. We have clients that want to do it themselves if they can at all if, if it's at all possible that they can. Um, and tell your clients what you did. And if there was a, uh, a bugaboo, uh, tell them. We have a large client. It was one of the 20 plus year clients a couple of weeks ago or maybe a couple of months ago. We had to migrate their site to a new server. And when, during the migration, we looked at the database to clean out some stuff, and we dumped this table that had the word log in it, thinking, oh, we don't need that. That's a log. We can clear it out. It was, I don't remember. Do you remember, like, 600 megabytes? It was just that one table with 600 megabytes. This is a huge banking education site. You know what that log was? For each of the, the practitioners that are on the site, and there are hundreds, it was tracking how many people had viewed their personal profile, and that appeared on their dashboard. 
So all of a sudden, all of the people on this website that are practitioners lost all of their data. And that was a huge thing. And that was not a bug. That was not a glitch. Okay. It wasn't we, but it was we, right? Because we're together. Um, did we, you know, we could have smoke screened him and said, hey, we figured out what the problem was. There was some weird glitch. Yeah, the weird glitch was us. We screwed up and we're sorry. We fixed it. He was great with it. So don't keep secrets. That always comes back to bite you. And for all, don't lie, because that's going to come back to bite you. Your clients are going to participate. Uh, they're going to not participate. They're going to appreciate. It rhymes. They're going to appreciate your honesty. Um, be an expert and become one. Always continue learning. There are resources, way more resources than you could ever uh, go through to keep learning. Keep learning. Find out what's new out there. Uh, doesn't mean just you're going to switch to it immediately. But you, you know what? A lot of times when a new product comes out, the product you already use that's, that's, uh, that's similar, they're going to have that same function. So when you find out about a new thing that's really exciting, um, maybe the product you already use has, has that function or they're going to have it or you could suggest it. So I'm not advocating that you, you flip around uh, on software. We have the same plugin stack that we've had since I've been there. I mean, we've used it a little, uh, we've changed it a little bit, but we don't change software very often. And I'm not advocating that you do that. I'm just advocating that you understand what's out there. Um, keep track of the software you use because active, actively developed themes and plugins are always getting new features. And those new features can help your clients and they can help you serve your clients better. So always keep on, on top of what's new in the products you use. Um, and this is hard for me. You, can't, you don't know it all and you can't know it all. And your clients really don't expect you to know it all. Uh, it really is okay to say, hey, you know what? I have no idea how to do this. This big site that we launched last week, the whole site was that way. At the beginning of the project, we I don't know that we told the client this, but between us, we were like, I don't know how to do any of this. Um, but we, we figured it out. We learned to do it. You can tell your client, hey, I don't know how to do this, but that sounds like a really cool idea. And I'll look into it, and if it's not, you know, if it's not you know, too huge of a project, I'll get back with you and we can discuss how we can make it happen. Um, and that leaves a lot of room. It may be something simple that you can do as a support a request, but that left the door open to say, hey, this is really cool, but it may be that this is not something we can do in our support agreement and it may cost. But we'll talk about that later. So tell your client if you don't know how to do it. You can't know it all. Uh, and then you, you should know where to get answers. Right? Where are some great places to get answers? I already skipped through, but uh, Slack groups. What are you going to say? Stack yeah, Stack Overflow. Um, yeah, there are some people that aren't very nice on Stack Overflow sometimes, right? So you have to make sure you've had your coffee. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's true, as long as they have the answer. Um, yeah, Slack groups, other developers, places like this, right? You know how to find the answers. So. Um, Responsiveness. <clears throat> this is a this is a catch twenty two, because we don't we don't want to respond immediately to every support ticket because I don't want people to think, hey, the second I send something, he's going to be sitting at his chair and he's going to fix it. But I also don't want it to go too long, because I want to serve the client. If if the ticket is, hey, I'm locked out of the website and we've got to make this change on the website because we have a newsletter going out to you know ten thousand people and I can't get on the site, I need help. I need to respond to that fast, right? They need to get on the website. Um, so you really have to balance this. You have to, you don't want to respond too fast, but you don't want to respond too slow. Um, so time, timeliness is important. Be strategic in your responses. Um, what do I mean by this? I, if, when, when our clients reach out to us, um, I, a lot of, well, <laughs> I can't name names. We have some clients that, that will take advantage. They will uh, ask for something that sounds like it's not gonna take too long, and then I can get an hour and a half in. And our, our is it okay to say what our parameters are? Our parameter is a support request will take me less than 15 minutes, take us less than 15 minutes to do. So if I just respond back and say, hey, yeah, that's no problem, 
And then an hour and a half later, I'm still fighting through this request. That's, uh, I don't know, I'm not gonna do math right now, but that's many, many, many support requests, not one. Um, so be strategic. If this looks like something that's gonna take too long, you gotta tell them. Don't surprise them at the end of it after you've done it and say, hey, that took me two hours and I'm sorry, we're gonna have to bill you at our hourly rate, which is, you know, whatever it is. Now, don't do that. Respond immediately and say, hey, I'm, I'm gonna take a look at this, but this looks like something that might take longer than is covered in your support agreement. And we'll need to talk about that if that's the case. Be strategic, don't promise the moon. Um, seize the moment. <clears throat> If you're having a go back and forth in the ticket system with a client, like you're responding and they're responding immediately back, and you respond again and they respond immediately back, take advantage of that. Don't fall off the planet, because that's a chance to close that ticket, to close that, that request. And also you're having a dialogue with the client, which is really important. So don't fall off the earth. Now they may fall off the earth, that's their prerogative. They can do that, they can stop replying. But as long as you've got their ear and you're trying to figure out their problem, seize that moment and take care of the problem. Don't put things off. You've all heard this. You don't file an email into a folder if you can do it in five minutes or less. If there's a ticket that's like seriously a five minute ticket, just do it. It helps your customer. It gets it off your list. We all have that, that thing in our brains when we can check something off. It really does something for us. Uh, and I said promises, promises. Don't make promises, just don't do it. Just don't do it. Just do what you say you're gonna do. Then you don't have to make promises. Let your yes be yes, let your no be no, and do what you say you're gonna do. And that goes a long way for clients. I'm gonna skip through most of this right here because time is up. So the, the slides will be available by QR code. I'm gonna skip through this whole thing because you guys are already efficient, I can tell. <clears throat> so what happens when you have a client that does, that does something wrong, really bad? We took on a site uh, about two years ago. It was a rescue site. The developer built the site in Elementor. We don't like Elementor, but that's only because we don't use it. It's not in our stack. But we took on this nonprofit customer um, really out of, I don't know why. Uh, yeah, mercy. It was out of mercy. Um, and the, the, pro the site had problems. And this lady, bless her heart, um, you all know what that means, right? When you say bless her heart. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a couple of weeks in, and Nathan had warned me. He said, now this lady's a little sharp. Uh, not, that <laughs> not sharp, but, you know, like sharp knife. Um, but it's fine. We won't have to do much for him. Um, but there were problems, and she started emailing. She wasn't doing what she was supposed to do, number one. She wasn't using the ticket system, started emailing. Um, and I got this email this day, one day, and it said, I can't figure out how to work with you people. Well, okay, that's all well and good, but don't call me you people, right? Um, it was hard not to respond to her. I wanted to, I really did in my, in my flesh, I wanted to respond to her. Um, and it wouldn't have been horribly ugly, but I, I, you know, I could have responded. So a couple of weeks ago, this was uh, about two and a half years ago that she came on board. Um, I got, we got, I, well, I got it through Nathan a couple of weeks ago. This is the same lady. Thanks for the consistently fine service your company provides us, Chris is first class. Now, not, not about me, this is not about me, but what if I had responded that day the way, I, the way that all of you, I, I would not be first class and we would not, in her mind, have consistently fine service. You know, what's funny about this lady is, well, there's a lot of things, but <laughs> what's funny about this lady is we took, we took on this client with terms that aren't our normal terms even, so she's not even paying the normal rates that, that our, our normal customers make, uh, pay. Um, but the point is, even though that was the case, even though she was the way she was, we served her and we have served her well. And she's very, very, very appreciative of that. Um, now, it could have been that she didn't come back and we would have needed to fire her. I am not advocating staying in a, 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 a client relationship that is never gonna get better. There are times you need to fire the client and move on. 
and uh, so I'm not saying that you shouldn't fire the client. Uh, this hasn't been too long ago. I'm, we are probably the only ones this happened to, but we did GA4 properties month, uh, months and months ago, almost a year ago. But Google, for some reason, punished the people that did what they were supposed to do. And if you had a UA property that still had the UA code on the site, it created a GA4 account for you, a property for you, and attached it to that UA code. Really, really helpful for when you have 100 clients. It's really helpful. Um, well, this particular client, she's the one that always has her hair on fire. But we uh, requested access to the property. She get, granted us access to the property. I noticed that there was a connected GA4 account to the UA account. It wasn't on the site. It was only being fed through the UA code. We had the correct GA4 code on the site. It was running. So what did I do? Same thing I do for all the other sites. I dumped the GA4 prop. I d unconnected it, disconnected it, and I dumped it in the trash can. Minutes later. <clears throat> no! What do you think you're doing? And that is exactly the way she typed it with that many question marks. And then she proceeded in the body of the email, I just gave you access to the property and you have deleted 12 years worth of my work. Well, number one, I got 28 days to pull it out of the trash can. And number two, if you had looked, and, they, and I am actually grateful I didn't see this. Um, Nathan handled it and then he said, hey, did you see the uh, interaction with... <clears throat> Uh, thankfully, I had not. But he, and what he said was, if, if you look at the email, this is not a property that's being used. This is a property that was automatically created. The property that is being used is still active. It is not in the trash can. And she replied back with something like, oh, well, I looked at it and I, th I thought I understood. Fine. Um, I, I would not have reacted to her at the moment. Uh, we did react between the two of us, but we, neither one of us really reacted to her. So, Here's the last thing. This is one of my little boys. I love it when he wears this shirt. In a world where you can be anything, be kind. Your client, you don't know what your client's going through. When somebody is being ugly to you, you don't know what they're going through. And you know, you may be the only kind person that they're gonna interact with. That has nothing to do with website development, nothing to do with client support, that has to do with being human. We all need kindness, and I advocate to you, be kind to your clients. Kindness does matter. You get to choose. There's, a, there's so much we can't choose, but you get to choose if you're gonna be, clients, uh, if you're gonna be kind to your clients. Um, yeah, it goes a long way for your business, but more important than that, just be kind. Um, I'm Chris Malone. I work for Nathan, one of the greatest web development agencies in the United States, and it's been my pleasure to be with you today. So, any questions? Like really fast questions, because we are out of time. Okay. Thanks. And so, if you want the slides, they can be there. You can, I don't really have a place where you can. Don't worry, it didn't have the lid on it. Uh, you can get me on, on Twitter X. All right, thank you guys. <clears throat>